Hey guys, what's up? My name is Sonali and today we are going to learn how to make this graphic. I would call this like a sorority collage graphic. I don't even know, but they're super trendy right now and it doesn't even have to be like you're in a sorority, like you can just make this obviously for anything, but I'm pretty sure I'm gonna put the word sorority in the title just because this is so trendy in the sorority world right now. They're honestly all over Instagram stories and even on Pinterest. So I wanted to come on here and kind of teach you guys how to do it because I actually put this graphic up on my Pinterest and usually my Pinterest doesn't get like that many saves, but this one got 57 saves and 9,000 impressions. And I actually got a few DMs on Instagram of people who saw this graphic on Pinterest asking me how to make it. So I thought I would just come on here and show you guys how I did this graphic. So today I will be using Photoshop. I know not everyone has access to it, um, but I'm not really proficient in Canva or any other thing. Um, so I made this in Photoshop, so I'm gonna teach you guys how I made it in Photoshop, um, but I definitely know that you can make it through um, other free websites. Also, sorry about my hair. I'm literally going to go film a video gig after this. And I know it's gonna be so hot outside and I know I'm gonna sweat. So I didn't even like touch my hair today. But let's get on to the video. Um, if you guys have any questions about anything in this video, I'm not a pro in Photoshop, but I've definitely been working with Photoshop a lot over the past um, four-ish years. So hopefully I can help you. If I can't, then probably just Google it. But anyways, let's get on to the video. So I just opened up Photoshop and this is the first page that opens up. It's basically telling me to create a new project. And as you can see, I have some preset um, widths and heights and just like artboards. Um, but we are going to make our own preset because I want to show you guys how to do that. I find this is really helpful um, because I don't have to think about the dimensions. So I would highly recommend Googling what are the dimensions for a YouTube thumbnail, an Instagram story, an Instagram post just like anything that you could possibly think of um, and then creating presets for them all because that will make your um, process just go even quicker. Um, as you can see, I have a YouTube thumbnail over here which I use every single week, so that's really helpful. Um, I do have a Snapchat filter down here which is also the same dimensions of an Instagram story but we're gonna actually create an Instagram story one. So we're gonna go over to this button right here, click it. All right, so we're gonna type in Instagram story change the width to 1080 and the height to 1920. Um, everything looks good. Um, the background contents doesn't really matter because you can always change it to transparent um, next time you use this preset. So I'm just gonna keep it at white because we're gonna fill up the whole background. Everything else looks pretty good. So I'm gonna save that preset and then there it is. So as you can see, I have all of these presets over here. So we're gonna um, click this twice. So actually before you open Photoshop, I recommend doing like a mood board. Like what do you want this graphic to look like? Um, I would try to make it as cohesive as possible. So if it's using the same filter over the pictures or if it's kind of like all one color, just like I made um, that one graphic that I showed you earlier, it was kind of like a red theme. And I did that because our big little theme was actually like red hearts on our shirts. So I just like kind of took from that inspo. So I'm not really sure what my inspo is gonna be. I know I like stars and I know that's really trendy right now, um, but I have like a lot of pictures already in my downloads for me to pull up. So I guess we can start there. And then once we have all the pictures placed out, we can go ahead and look for some cute little graphics and some Pinterest things to just throw in there and make it a hundred times more trendy. So we're gonna go into my downloads. We're gonna bring all of these, drag them into Photoshop. We're gonna have to press enter for all of these. So as you can see, I have a lot of pictures over here and it's a bit overwhelming and we definitely don't wanna use all of these pictures. Um, I personally like to see a little bit more graphics than pictures. So if you wanna pick out like your five best pictures or like maybe even six best pictures and then work from there. I'm just gonna go in and kind of like choose the ones I want to use. So I'm just gonna start rearranging the photos and kind of like placing them where I possibly want them to be. You can also make them bigger or smaller by 
using this arrow, dragging it down, dragging it up. If for some reason you want to change the ratio of a picture, you can press shift and then hold down the arrow and then, you know, make it wider or taller. Um, but I'm just gonna do command Z, which is undo. That is a very, very good shortcut to use and I always use it. Um, by the way, I'm on a Mac, so it could be different for PC users, um, but command Z learn it, memorize it, that will be your best friend. So I'm gonna actually just make this a little bit smaller, put it up here for now. I really love this picture, probably gonna put it up here. Oh, I really like this picture too, there's so many good ones. I also really like this picture, but I think I'm going to um, kind of hide it for now. So what you can do is press this I button over here and disappears um, without deleting it. So that's really nice because you can always make it come back anytime. We have some Katie hats. I thought that would be cool, but I don't know if it's like the vibe we're looking for. I'm gonna try to rearrange all this how I like and then I will come back. So I got everything pretty much laid out the way I wanted it to. Um, as you can see, it kind of overlaps in weird areas. So this is where I'm going to teach you guys how to like remove the backgrounds from pictures slash erase. It's just honestly whatever technique that you want to use, what's easier for you. Um, sometimes erasing is just more time consuming. So there is like a selecting tool that is a little bit quicker. So I'm going to show you both ways. Um, first, we're going to do the selecting tool. This is maybe just a little bit harder to learn, but that's totally fine. It's not going to be anything too crazy. So we have this picture selected. We're actually going to um, right click on the layer. We're going to go to edit contents, edit contents. It's going to pull it up into its own like little artboard. So what we're going to do here is remove the background. So we're gonna go over to the selecting tool, quick, quick selection tool. Um, and then as you can see over here, this is um, what you wanna take away. And then this is what you want to keep. So I'm going to be taking away all this greenery around me. And then you can also increase the brush size um, and then pretty much just go all around the body. And honestly, it could be a little bit tricky when you have this intricate of a background. Um, a white wall is gonna be so much quicker. It's literally just gonna be like, you go around yourself and it's done perfectly. Um, but this will be a little bit harder, but you can always clean it up with the eraser tool. So don't worry if you don't get everything perfect. Um, it's actually better to leave more than erase more because again, you can always clean it up with an eraser, but you can't always bring it back. So as you can see, or maybe you can't see, but I kind of got my jeans in it. So I'm actually gonna hit option. And as you can see, it kind of changed to the minus one. And when I take my finger off of option, it goes back and then I click option again it goes to the minus one. So that is a cool little shortcut. Um, so I'm just going to undo all that on the jeans. Okay, cool. You might have to lower the size of the brush when it, you know, gets in between the legs and like in between fingers if you wanna be like super precise with it. Um, I don't really care for this graphic just because it is like a Instagram story that people are going to see for like what 24 hours so it's not anything too crazy. There's probably better ways to do this but like I said I'm not a Photoshop pro. I've just been doing it for a while so this is just how I've learned to do it. So everything seems to be selected that I want selected so we're going to come to the background layer. We're going to click it twice um, just normally and it's gonna bring up a new layer. You can name it whatever you want. Um, usually I just hit enter, so layer one. <laughs> and then you can just hit delete and bam, the background is pretty much gone. But as you can see, there are a little bit left over of the grass around my arms and stuff. Um, but like I said, you can always erase it when you go back into the um, main project. Um, but I think I did get a little bit more of my jeans 
maybe, I don't know. So what you can do, if you like see that you wanna go back and redo a little bit more, you can hit Command Z and that will take it back. So actually, that's fine. So delete again. And then you wanna press um, Command S, which is save. Command S. Don't know what that means, but usually it will save it in the project, um, but that's fine. We can just kind of drag it to the other projects. So what you wanna do is hit this move tool, literally just pick it up, drag it to the next project and plop it in. And you can kind of just resize it from here. All right, so that is the first one and pretty much the hardest one because all of the other backgrounds are white and way more simple than that. Um, but really quickly, I just wanted to show you how you can erase just around the arm. So go to the eraser tool. Sometimes I like to have the hardness um, all the way up and not have like the soft edges around it because like my arms, I don't know, I don't want them to like disappear like halfway through. Um, so I can just go around, kind of clean up a little bit. Like I said, this is an Instagram, so it doesn't need to be like super duper perfect, but like obviously you still wanna make it look really cool and good. So if you like miss a little bit, it's not gonna be detrimental to your project. Another thing I wanted to show you guys is how to not have like as many harsh lines in your collages. So I would actually still use the eraser tool for this. Um, and we're actually going to bring down our hardness and sometimes you can actually bring down the opacity and then just like kind of like go over and kind of just blend it out if that makes sense and then it's just not as harsh um so it's a little bit more pleasing to the eye and then there's definitely going to be like a graphic or a background over there so it's going to look even better Really quick, I wanted to show you how to remove the background on another picture with a white background. Um, so we're gonna take this layer, say edit contents. It's gonna bring it up into another layer. Go to the quick selection tool um, and it's on the plus side. So we're already going to just move it around. And as you can see, it kind of just like goes around the people, um, but it kind of cut my friend Kaylin's head off because her hair is blonde. So I don't think it recognized that but totally fine, just press option, hold that down while you bring this back. Press option, bring Kaylin back. See how that was so much easier with a white background? Um, double click, hit enter and delete and bam, the background is gone. And obviously on her hair, it's a little bit, you know, fuzzy and just like not as clean as you may want it to be. So you can totally go ahead and go around with an eraser tool, but I don't got that kind of time. I don't want to do that, so we're not going to. Um, hit Command Save to save it. Um, and then we're just gonna bring that back into our project. Like I said, usually when you hit command save, it saves it in the project, but for some reason, it's not happening this time. So that's totally fine. Um, we can delete our other layer and then we can place a graphic behind them, which is really cool. So I'm going to go ahead and cut every picture out and then I will be back. So I cut everything out and then I went onto Pinterest, I went onto Redbubble, Google, 
tried to get some graphics off there. Usually I will screenshot them on my Mac, so it's like Command Shift 4, um, and then that will give you the option to screenshot it. And then you just drag the little mouse across the screen where you want to screenshot it. I have this cool lightning bolt. Um, let's see. These yellow palm trees. I'm kind of going for a yellow theme as you can tell. Um, this KD thing. So this is kind of all about rearranging as well. So I think I'm going to place the palm trees like under all of these layers and see where they look the coolest. Definitely want the palm trees to show, so I'm going to make this larger. And then I'm just going to layer these a little bit better. Maybe turn this around and then this one. Maybe increase the size. So as you can see, it is a little bit cluttered, so I feel like I should take away a picture, but I don't want to, but I feel like I should. So I think I'm gonna take away this one up here. That just makes it a little bit less, you know, all over the place. So I just brought in the KD graphic. I'm going to do edit contents, and then I'm gonna do the quick selection tool and then just go around. It should kind of just find all the edges and then you need to go into the um, letters with the holes like the A and the T and get really small to get in the E's. Oh, forgot the Y. All right, now the command S thing is working. So now I have to figure out where I want this to be. I think that's kind of cute, honestly. It's also important to name your layers, which you see I have not done and now I'm really confused about it. So I'm gonna name this layer Katie to stay organized. I'm just gonna maybe increase the size a little bit. Also, another really cool tool you can use is the cloning tool. So you can go down here, click this button, and for the palm trees, you see how there's this white space over here? I want that to also be the palm trees, but I don't want to resize the palm trees graphic, if that makes sense. So I'm going to hit Option, and then I'm going to click this black part, and then pretty much just paint. And now it looks like the palm tree graphic is all the way down there. So I want a graphic to separate like all of this over here. Um, and I did like that lightning bolt. So we're gonna do that edit contents thing. All right, so we got this lightning bolt. I don't know where should I put it? Let's see. You honestly sit here for a while just like rearranging things um for them to look the best i feel like this is kind of cool so as you can see down here needs something in the background so we're going to come over to this rectangle tool and make a rectangle and then we're going to fill it um and then go to the color picker and then click on any yellow color that you really like in the palm tree graphic to keep it kind of like all the same you know and that looks good i think i'm going to make it a gradient Let's see. Then we can pick it. Okay. Then pick this one. A brighter yellow, maybe. That's fine, kind of matches. Another cool thing you can do is adding drop shadow. And I'm gonna do this around the KD because it's just not popping enough for me. So we're gonna double click on the KD layer and then click drop shadow. And as you can see, it automatically just popped. You can kind of like, you know, decide how crazy you wanna make the drop shadow, um, how harsh you wanna make it. 
my opacity is not even all the way up so you can like really make it dark. I actually kind of like that, making it a little bit darker. Yeah, that looks 100% better because then it just pops out more. Um, we're going to do that to the bolt too. Okay, and for this one, I think I'm going to make the size a little bit more just so the drop shadow isn't as harsh um, and then bring down that opacity just a little bit. You can also do it on the pictures of people and create a drop shadow around them. That also looks really cool. But this is the finished graphic for today. You can go as crazy or as simple as you want to. It just really depends on your style and like what you're going for for the graphic. But I hope this video actually helped you guys out. I know so many of you guys are very curious on how to make these graphics. I know there are definitely ways to do it in free applications such as Canva. I think it's free. I definitely know it's like you can pay a subscription, but I think like you can get a free version. Um, but there also is a Photoshop trial. So if you've never used it before, you can get a trial and try it out for yourself. Um, I know there's like a, a photography bundle. I think it's Photoshop and Lightroom for maybe 10 to 12 bucks a month. So if you guys are interested in getting into that, maybe that's where you can start out instead of just getting the whole creative suite because that is, you know, kind of expensive. But again, if you have any questions about anything, leave them in the comments down below. I'll try to help you guys out and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.